Here goes, a moment of truth. Hi folks, we're here today with a Lakeshore Carbide hard milling end mill and a piece of high speed steel. Ryan Gebbs reached out to us through Proven Cut asking for a good recipe to machine high speed steel on a Tormach. So we wanted to take this opportunity and help him out. We went ahead and made the cutting tool and this video is all about the tips and tricks that we learned. Thanks for tuning in and welcome to another Wednesday Widget. To start out, we're going to make a small aluminum jig that's going to hold our high-speed steel blank at the right angle so that way our three-axis machine can machine the profile of the cutter with just a simple 2D contour toolpath. This jig is pretty simple to make. We start out by machining the profile in OP1. We set it up with a set of Saunders Machine Works aluminum soft jaws for side two clean off the hat, put some nice chamfers on it, and it's ready to go. Now that our aluminum jig is made, we are ready to set up our high speed steel blank. So we are going to put the aluminum jig right down against the fixture plate, and then hold the high speed steel blank in place as we clamp onto it with a mod vise. We are going to use 2D adaptive to rough out the profile for this cutter. Even with an end mill designed specifically for hard milling, we're still going to need to run it pretty slow. So we're going to use a surface speed of 150 feet per minute. We're going to feed it at 12 inches a minute, which comes out to close to 9 tenths feed per tooth. And then we're going to maintain an optimal load of just 6 thousandths. So even with these slow speeds and feeds, with a full depth of cut, we were hearing some pretty horrible noises. So we reduced the depth of cut down to 85 thousandths and we decided to leave 4 thou for a radial stock to leave. After Adaptive has cleared the area, we're ready to come in with a finish pass. For our first attempt, we run it at 150 surface feet per minute. We feed it at a half thou feed per tooth. For the geometry, we have to select each of these lines individually because it wants to select the entire top profile. We can hold Alt and then that's going to let us grab individual lines. We grab each of these lines, we give it a tangential extension distance just to make sure it is a smooth transition on and off the part. And we're going to adjust our bottom height quite a ways below the bottom profile. So we do this because our 2D adaptive was taking 85,000 step downs. So since this is a very tough material, it's probably going to create a wear line there right about the 85,000 mark that you're going to see if you include that section of end mill in your finish pass. We have the clearance to be able to drop it down below. So we set our bottom height at negative 125 below the selected contours. That way, that section of higher wear at the bottom side of the end mill is going to be below our finished contour. I had faith that this was going to be a winning setup. We posted the program and let it fly. So if we look at this top profile, the lines are straight and the corners are sharp. But if you look at a picture from our first attempt, those straight lines and sharp corners aren't so clear. So our best conclusion was that this really hard material is causing a lot of tool pressure and deflection. So we're going to try to make straight lines and sharp corners. Lucky for us, the length of this tool is not very critical. So when we set it up, we wanted to make sure that we were coming back at it with the finish pass, experiencing the same amount of stock, the same setup, really for learning more than anything, we went ahead and ran another 2D adaptive. So when we set the tool back up for the following attempts, after I touched X with the Heimer, I set that at a value of positive 15 thousandths. I created a sketch then, duplicated an adaptive strategy, and then selected that sketch for our stock contours. So with that sketch selected, it knows how much material is there to clear out. So that way we're able to come back with a 2D adaptive that only takes one minute instead of four minutes. 
When we look at the Passes tab under 2D Contour, we can see that there's an Outer Corner Mode drop-down. So it gives us an option to roll around corner, keep sharp corner, or keep sharp corner with loop. So our first attempt was roll around. For the second attempt, we're going to try keep sharp corner. We can see the toolpath is a, an abrupt change in direction. I thought this might help out a little bit and make our corners a little bit sharper. So there's our attempt number one. And there is our second try. I think that our second attempt looks quite a bit better than the first, but those corners are still pretty well rounded. Let's try to make them a little sharper. For our third attempt, we're going to try keep sharp corner with loop. This generates a toolpath that tangentially extends past each line, moves up in Z, and comes at the following line with a completely separate movement. You can see here in the simulation what that's going to look like. Attempt number three was our best one yet. The corners are not perfect. There's still some room for improvement, but they're definitely sharper than they were. You can see across the tip too that there's a little bit of a radius. So let's try taking a little bit lighter of a cut. For attempt number four, we get into our passes tab and let's try doing multiple finish passes. We're going to take two passes with a step over of two thousandths. Keep sharp corner with loop option. It seemed to work the best, so we're going to stick with it. That multiple finish selections option is going to make Fusion generate two finish passes with a step over of two thousandths. The surface finish of the machined areas of this part were never really great to begin with. So this isn't like machining mirrors on aluminum. There were definitely some lines that followed the path of the end mill. Going to a lighter radial cut really didn't affect the actual visual look of the surface finish. So going lighter helped our geometry. The logical next step is to try even lighter. For attempt number five, we're going to come down to a step over of one thousandths and a total of three of those finish passes. When we look at attempt number five, this is looking pretty good. Again, the surface finish didn't change. So honestly, at this point, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. But there was one more thing that I wanted to try, and that was simply checking the box for repeat finishing pass. So this is just going to make it duplicate the final pass against the part. 
Typically, rubbing is something that you want to be concerned with. These really light radio cuts and flex passes certainly are not going to help your tool life. But when we look at a picture of attempt number six, it was the best one yet. Those corners are sharp, the lines are straight. Sure, this end mill isn't going to last as long, but the goal was to make a good part and the flex passes let us do that. Here goes, a moment of truth. Oh yeah, like a glove. So it took us a few tries, but we were able to get a good part. This is really where Proven Cut shines, is the difficult cutting recipes that we're able to dial in, and then all of the speeds, feeds, pictures, video, and the F3D file can be found at provencut.com. So thank you guys for watching, and take care out there, folks.